Every year, crowds of tourists visit southern Ethiopia. Some come for wildlife and others come to snap photos of indigenous tribes. Tourists are braving horrific roads and long drives in order to go tribal. Your love's a crime in my head's the scene when you go to steal my heart. But the experience comes with a few challenging surprises. When you go to steal my heart. Travel riders cover different beats. I tackle the quirky, cultural side of travel. I find edgy, risk-taking stories. The trick is to find stories that inspire. And the stories that sell. So I'm getting ready to go on an epic journey, 500 kilometers along bumpy roads to the south of Ethiopia. I'm uh, going to see some uh, tribes, one called the Mercy. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. It will take us three days by land cruiser to get to the lower Omo Valley, one of the most culturally diverse regions on the planet. 53 tribes live here, most with unique customs and traditions, as different from Western life as whales are to Shih Tzus. I watch as the landscape changes from the city smog of Addis to the rolling green hills of southern Ethiopia. The houses turn from concrete to thatched huts. The roads turn from paved to potholed. No potholes. There's no potholes whatsoever. <laughs> Peeing by the side of the road. I get no privacy on this television show. It's a real bummer. <laughs> but the men have gathered. Oh, yes. There Where are you are. peeing, Julia? Hello. Where are you going to pee? <laughs> Hopefully I'll get a little privacy. One of the first pieces of travel advice I ever got was if you ever had to make a shit in the woods, take your pants off just in case you get chased by a wild animal. I think they're marabou stork. Oof. Oh yeah, it reeks, doesn't it? Oof. All the, it's like all the fish guts everywhere. Five hours, three pee breaks, and countless potholes later, we're getting closer to meeting our first indigenous tribe. The tribe is clearly expecting us. Mule, where have you brought us? Mule, our guide for this trip, prepaid the chief a fee for our visit. The people are called Alaba and they are Muslim. Yeah. We ain't in Kansas no more. Everything happens within this hut. The yeah, kitchen, yeah, yeah. the Everything sleeping, the cooking, the cows, the laundry, the anjera. All that. Great. She's baking in Jera. That's what I wanted to see how, how to do. to pay them. Uh, okay, here you go. Everyone relax. 
As a tourist, being accosted for money is a reality all over the world. It's up to the individual to determine how they're going to deal with it. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. I should never have done this. Don't give to children. I made a big mistake. I regret it. Sometimes it feels good to give money, but it might not help in the long run. Silence is for me In the space between these lines is where I hide Giving money to children can encourage a culture of begging, a reliance on tourist handouts, but donating to a local organization is better. traffic in Ethiopia. 6.30. I'm trying to get through on the national highway here. Oh, let my people go. Merging into bovine traffic, I ask to take a photo and find that not every snapshot comes at a price. As soon as I showed them that snapshot, like their eyes lit up, their face lit up, and that, I love that. guy here, he's like, what's going on? I don't have a cow. What a day of contrast. I really don't know what to expect anymore when we meet our next tribe, the Mercy. The road is flooded, so now we can't pass, and we're uh, parked here on the side of the road, just kind of waiting. Welcome to another day in the life. Can the car go through? No, no. This is part one in a series of infinity. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get across today. But people are moving really quickly, like they're solving the problem. We've got mechanical problems. And, you know, if it's not giant potholes, it's washed out rivers. You know, you just have to be patient. We're in the middle of nowhere. probably just a few kilometers away from uh, the Mercy Tribe, but since the road is so terrible, it's taking us a really long time to get there. Oh, how I miss those good I'm starting to feel like my story is going to suffer because I won't have as long as I want to hang out with the tribe. It's just going to be crazy. How are you going to like integrate yourself and embed yourself with these people when they're going to look at you as just like another white chick who wants to take the picture? I'm horrified that Robin feels this way, and I think he's wrong. I believe it will be possible to make a connection. So I'm just showing up here to the South Omo Research Centre. Researching beforehand is really important, especially because we're going to see an Indigenous um, culture that might be sort of hard to integrate into. So it's important to me, and it's an important part of my writing process. In the Mercy tribe, the women have these huge lip plates. Um, but the big question is, why do they do it? For many tourists, a visit with the Mercy can make you feel like a walking dollar sign. But in the words of Jim Morrison, I wanted to break on through to the other side. I want to make a real connection to the people of the Mercy, not just take their photos. I always get nervous and antsy and irritated before the story, and then as soon as I get my story, I'm like, ah, you know, and fine, I chill out. But I'm now, I'm, I'm in the red zone right now. I gotta get there real, real soon. 
We eat that uh, teti flowers which kill cattle and uh, can, if they bite you, you can get sleeping sickness and you can go, fall into a coma. And with, there's thousands of them, thousands, thousands, thousands of them on our car. And we camping outdoors. Right now, the guy's got a branch and he's smacking the teetsy flies off of the car. Sunset, <laughs> evil hour, because this is teetsy flies and malaria mosquitoes. I feel like the flies have had enough time to get lost. Okay. Alright, why Did you get bitten? Um, yeah. Our biggest uh, flies. Mm -hmm. The teetsy? The teetsy. Yeah. So today you met with the chief. And yeah. What did you decide with him? To be at their village, they charge. Wow. wow. I told him that we'll be there tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Yeah. I awake in my tent to the growl of baboons who have surrounded the campsite. Long-tailed colobus monkeys play in the trees above. I really don't like baboons. They're big, they're fast, they're vicious. They have huge incisors, and um, I'm scared of them. We're on the way to the Mercy Tribe. It's taken four days to get to this point, and today's the day where I'm going to get the story. I'm going to ask how their lives have changed now that tourists have come to visit, just to get a sense of the impact of tourism on their community. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. If we break down, we are so screwed. I'm determined to meet the real Mercy people, so I've decided to keep my camera tucked away, at least for a little while. All these other days. right now, uh, you know, we just pulled into the village and um, Mule has met with the chief, Chambo. What, what is it that they're doing here? They're making daily plates. Oh, okay, great. Can can you ask if I can try? Maybe they can show me how to make one? Yeah, yeah. They're... Is that okay? They're gonna show me how to make a lip plate. So I've taken off my shoes and I'm just sitting with them and um, I'll follow their lead. Thank you. Mine doesn't look very good. <laughs> Seems to be drawing quite a crowd. I don't know how many uh, Ferengi foreigners sit down and make uh, lip plates, but this is the way to interact. It's perfect. <coughs> okay, now what? Oh, yours is better. What age do you um, start to wear the lip plates? <laughs> Seventeen, yeah. And it's just the women? Yeah, it's just the women. <laughs> the bigger your lip plate, the more beautiful you're considered in the Mercy culture. Not bad for a first attempt, but it begs the question, how do they get this into their bottom lip? She picked one little spot really close to the gum. And that's where they make the cut. And first they'll start with something like this, just to get um, the you know the gum to start expanding, and then they'll move up. And can you ask if it hurts? No, it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. I said, well, you know, what would you do? Can a Ferengi get one? And they're like, yeah, sure. Here you go. <laughs> This is like, you know, the, the ultimate uh, cultural encounter. Though we come from different cultures, though we have different traditions and concepts of beauty, there is a bond between women, wherever we come from. The connection was magical, but fleeting. By now, other tourists are arriving, and we witness the darker side of tribal tourism. It's a catch-22 in any country. Tourists want to interact with indigenous locals, but the process of interaction changes the way locals live. And in the end, what you get is the extreme dysfunction of the Mercy tribe. So instantly, as soon as the tourists pulled up, you know, went into a different mode here, and um, the experience is totally different. As soon as they see that I have a camera, everyone swarms and they're like, photo, photo, photo. This is really what it is to me. It's a tourist feeding frenzy. This is a tribal theme park. 
I need the one. I know. I don't. The Mercy charge one to two burp per photo. That's about 10 to 20 cents. I need pictures for my story, so I take a deep breath and jump into the fray. How do you want one one? This, this doesn't sit so well with me, yeah. Every time I look at it, I always remember this pit that I feel in my stomach. One, two. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I see nothing wrong with paying someone who appears in my photographs. The problem is that here it has become a business, encouraging desperate people to pose for photos as a means of making easy money. I saw this kid, I was like, whoa, picture. Took a picture, then he went, Falber, doubled his price. I'm arguing with an eight-year-old wearing an AK-47 about 40 cents. Why do things have to come to this? It was one of those moments that just slaps you in the face of what the hell are you even doing here? I meet Ollie, a Mercy filmmaker who's making a documentary on Mercy land issues. It's my best opportunity to get the Mercy point of view. We are human, but it's, we're not uh, like uh, a zoo or coming to take you photo and go. I ask him what tourists can do to have a positive encounter with the Mercy people. He advises that people stay longer and interact. Popping out of the 4x4, spending 10 minutes snapping photos, won't bring anyone closer to cultural understanding. Have you seen a change in um, people's way of life before tourists and after tourists? Yes, and now some people, they only just sit and wait for tourists. So they're no longer herding cattle, they're sitting, waiting they're for sitting tourists. Waiting. Travel writing is a really powerful platform to be able to say something important. So I'm definitely going to write something that shows the good and the bad and how tourists can break through that barrier. Well, I'll give them an experience about what visiting these tribes is all about, what you have to go through to get these photographs, how it impacts the people that you're meeting and how it will impact you. Don't you know you're richer than you can know? We have one last tribe to visit, the Konzo. This is my last chance to break through the bars of the human zoo. Can I try? Is that you? Yeah. All right. Okay. For you, I leave everything behind. It's standing right in front of your eyes. Standing right in front of your eyes. Standing right in front of your eyes. Uh, apparently, I just got my ass kicked by a little kid. When I go to the tribe and connect in the universal language. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do is contrast the different tribes, but I, like I think this one will be really interesting because I brought a soccer ball, and I'm going to try and get past the, uh, the tourist bubble. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here with Chuchu, and he's going to be my guide for the Konzo people. Yeah. I born here, this is my village. Mm -hmm. In the company of the side. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and what do the people do here? Our economy is based on agriculture here. They make terraces, protect erosion and soil conservation. It's like the life was passing. This is one of the important things to see in the village. So this is community house uh, for the boys which are not married. But the boys are not married. They sleep here. They sleep here? Every night. They're kind of like the firemen, the ambulance, the police. They, they help out with the community. Three tribes in three days, and each so different. So the village is uh, over 200 years old, and we can tell that by the generation tree. Each stick represents 18 years. You add up all the uh, sticks, it's 13. And the stones represent uh, a victory over a wild animal, lion or, or leopard. And this is a celebration square. 
So let me ask you a question. Do you think we can organize a, a soccer game here? So who's going to be with Choo Choo and who's going to be with, yeah. with, with the Faringa? Oh! When it was an authentic experience, like playing soccer with those kids, I felt fantastic. I felt wonderful. Yeah, here I am playing soccer with these, these kids, and we're all having fun, and it's great. <laughs> First table tennis, and now soccer. Put on a good game, despite our best efforts. The uh, the home team won, two one. Football! <laughs> Next, Chuchu showed me a traditional game called Gritter, involving a piece of wood and a lot of jumping. Jumping, something I might be good at. <laughs> Finally, I was communicating, learning, and interacting. Still as a Ferengi, but no longer a walking money bag. Just to travel in a strange land, trying to connect. <laughs> so, um, totally different experience to the last tribe. And that's taught me quite a lot about how to approach this in a way that everybody wins. Thank you. <laughs> I love you too. Two. Hey! Bye. That was good soccer. We have all the good elements for a road trip story exotic destinations, fascinating cultures, obstacles, and challenges. But most importantly, we broke through the tourist barrier. Now we just have to write about it.